Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome to another trap setup by Bobby Fischer. So uh, today I'm going to show you the game from 1963 played in New York. And that's actually the offhand uh, game. That's uh, uh, one of the games played uh, in a series of blitz. So we have Bobby Fischer. At that time, he was uh, number six in the world, according to the chess metrics. And his ranking was 2757. Uh, Bobby Fischer is 20 years old and he's gonna play as white and his opponent Ruben Fine, one of the strongest American players and Ruben Fine had actually chances to uh, play for the world champion title uh, after Alexander Aliehin died uh, but he refused, uh, he withdrew from the tournament because he argued that uh, Soviet masters gonna play for uh, one of them and then he has no chances so uh, all his preparations he just gonna waste a couple of months and doesn't make sense for him. In my personal opinion, if he told that he is number one in the world and he stated that a couple of times, uh, he should just beat all of the, you know, Soviets and just win the world champion tournament. So uh, he didn't do that. Uh, that's uh, why uh, he was not the world champion, but definitely uh, one of the strongest in the world uh, players in 40s and in 50s. Uh, and uh, he gonna play as black. And I estimate his ranking as uh, 2500 because just 10 years before this game was played, uh, Ruben Fine retired and his ranking at that time was about 26. So that's my estimation. He is already 49 years old. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. We have e4 by Bobby Fischer, e5, knight on f3, d6. So Philidor defends. It's considered to be a bit too passive for black, but there are still a couple of very sharp lines. So both sides have to know what they are doing. We have d4. Uh, this is the main uh, line and D takes on E4 is the main line, but Ruben Fine play knight on D7. We have bishop on C4, uh, one of the favorite moves in many openings by Bobby Fischer. Of course, this bishop is watching F7. And in this game, Bobby Fischer gonna set up another trap. And if you don't know the, the first one, the most famous one in Sicilian defense, Check this video because every player should just know that this is the most important uh, trap in Sicilian defense. Uh, and here we have c6 by uh, Ruben Fine and castle by Bobby Fischer. So uh, white just developed the pieces, castle, nothing fancy. Uh, but black have to be very precise now. Uh, black can't just develop, you know, this is pretty uh, logical move, but it doesn't work because D takes on E5 winning the game. So for example, D takes on E5, knight G5, and now this pawn can be defended. So it's very, very dangerous. Queen on C7, now knight on F7, uh, rook is under attack. If rook moves, then knight g5. Now rook is under attack again. So white are ahead in development. Also one one pawn and gonna win the exchange. So definitely uh, not the best uh, for black. And also if knight on e5, it's uh, slightly better, but not really. Uh, because knight on e5, d takes on e5 and now bishop f7. And king can't take the, the bishop because queen is hanging. So uh, king is seven and then just exchange the, the queens and white also have very easy game, uh, extra pawn and ahead in development. All the bishops can, you know, easily enter the game. Knight also, the, the rooks can come into the open file very comfortable game so this is why bishop e7 this is the main line and it actually should prevent the knight from jumping to g5 but the main line shows something else so d takes on e5 d takes on e5 and now bobby fisher didn't go for the main line but believe me or not the main line knight g5 it looked like suicide but after bishop on g5 Queen h5 is played with the threat on the checkmate on f7 and attack on the bishop. So that's the main line. And after queen on e7, just exchange the pieces 
Bishop on g5, knight g on f6, f3 and the game can continue, white have advantage, better development, it's much easier to play, that's definitely the most important in this position. However, Bobby Fischer set up the trap, so you can try maybe if you have this position play as Bobby Fischer, queen on e2, with the very sneaky idea of rook on d1, uh, pinning the knight and winning this pawn, but this is much deeper. Ruben Fine play knight g on f6, preparing for the castle. We have rook on d1 as planned, and now is a critical moment where black have to play very correctly because the trap is set. So now this pawn is under attack, and this knight is pinned. What would you play as black here? The only move actually is b5. b5 is the only correct move and it's very important move uh, because after bishop on b3 and queen a5, white has nothing here. So uh, for example, knight on g5 attacking the f7 doesn't work because black simply castle and there is no continuation here. However, we have queen on c7 and it looks like very similar idea, so uh, and it's even more logical because bring extra defender uh, to e5, so that makes sense. However, this is the trap, and here Bobby Fischer has two options. Uh, one is more aggressive, and one which he choose, uh, which won the game. Uh, more aggressive would look like that: bishop on f7, and after king on f7, queen c4 with check. Uh, king e8 and now knight g5. So the threat of course is uh, check on f7 uh, followed by knight on e6 and that would be a checkmate. So uh, rook on f8 and now knight e6 attacking the rook, attacking the pawn, attacking the queen and after the queen is moved, uh, then white actually can harass the, the, the queen uh, this way or this way. And if queen uh, leave this diagonal, then white can actually pick up this pawn, then can jump here on c7, uh, fork the, the rook and the king. There are a lot of tactical ideas here. So definitely that was one of the options. However, Bobby Fischer play knight on g5. Uh, and that's the continuation of the trap. We have castle and here there is only one move winning for white. So uh, feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. The trap uh, of Bobby Fischer in this game while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? Not very complicated, but still you need to calculate a bit. So bishop f7, this was played by Bobby Fischer and in this position Ruben Fine resigned the game. And some people say that Ruben Fine was shocked and he played against Bobby Fischer so he just, just didn't believe that, okay, this is, what is this move, okay? Uh, and he resigned. Uh, however, uh, he calculated correctly or he was correct that Bobby Fischer calculated correctly. Whichever is true, uh, white is winning in every variation here. So for example, king on h8 doesn't work of course because of the fork. So uh, winning the exchange and winning the pawn of course uh, is better for white. And also if rook takes on f7, so sacrificing the, the bishop, uh, it also works in white's favor because queen on c4. And now you understand why this b5 was very important, because this negate the trap. Bobby Fischer couldn't execute the trap uh, if pawn is on b5, because it controls c4. So that's the idea. That was, that's why this uh, move would be very, very powerful. The only thing what black actually can try to play is knight on d5. Knight on d5. So uh, giving back the material and giving some time. And now knight on f7, because this just doesn't work. Okay, getting back the material just doesn't work because bishop on g5, bishop g5, 
and now knight b6 winning back the pawn uh, and then attacking the queen so uh, doesn't work uh, if d6 it also doesn't work for the same reason uh, black half maybe slightly worse position because of this pawn uh, but it's still playable and black can try to uh, fight for the for the draw uh, b2 is under attack so white would have to do something about that uh, if b3 the knight b6 uh, defending the rook on a8 which is very important uh, because this rook actually can jump to the 8th rank and cause some problems but there are no problems if the knight is on uh, on b6 okay then uh, this bishop actually can develop uh, with tempo on c2 so everything is fine and black can just play here uh, knight on f7 this is the correct move which bobby fisher definitely would play and then b5 and this queen has to decide what to do uh, definitely it would be good to just stay on this diagonal uh, I think you agree with that uh, there are also other possibilities winning but staying on this diagonal it's easier just what the first have to be done is knight on h6 with check and now if black don't want to be behind in material too much take the knight uh, and then queen on b3 and what is possible is knight on c5 attacking the queen the point is now we have queen on g3 with check so with tempo and now king h8 he takes on d5 and white is uh, easily winning uh, with the extra exchange and uh, better pawn structure also uh, we have extra pawns so that's enough to win and also if knight on f6 in this position it also doesn't work because e takes on d5 c takes on d5 and position of black just collapse bishop h6 now we have uh, very dangerous ideas mating ideas here we have this this idea of taking this pawn uh, for free also uh, this is very dangerous with the with the knight attacking the pawn on d5 with the rook attacking so uh, this is just winning for uh, for white so I think Ruben Fine just believed that Bobby Fischer calculated everything correctly and remember these were the blitz games uh, so not very serious one that was the match and Bobby Fischer won this match uh, but not but big margin that was you know a uh, slight advantage he won a couple more games uh, they played for fun and actually Ruben Fine was shocked when Bobby Fischer one of these games uh, put into his book like the the 60 most memorable games of Bobby Fischer and he was quite shocked and uh, and unhappy about that but that's the different story and I will tell you about that in another video so uh, stay tuned if you want to see another material press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one